My name is Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube channel. And today I'm looking at the Era 1 and Era 2 acoustic amps by Hughes and Kettner. So these amps have been out for a couple of years now and Hughes and Kettner have asked me to review them and more specifically to compare the Era 1 to the Era 2. I will show you a rundown of the features of the amps later on, but let's just start by saying the features are identical on both of them. This is great. The only difference in these two amps is the price, the size, and the speakers. So the Era 1 has one 8-inch speaker and a 1-inch dome tweeter, and the Era 2 has the same but two 8-inch woofers. The Era 1 is also 250 watts, and the Era 2 is 400 watts. And the weight is about 10 pounds more on the Era 2 amp. They come in black or wood effect, and <laughs> that's a whole new conversation about what color do you want your amp to be. I have so many black speakers at home that I wanted to try the wood effect. I thought it might just look a bit different. I feel like if you're touring or on stage, the black one might hold up to the rigors of the road a bit more. One thing to note though, the wood one is actually slightly lighter. And with the smaller amp, with the Era 1, it's actually about two pounds lighter, which is quite significant. The larger ones are about the same. But if I was gonna choose something to take around town, I definitely would go for the smaller amp. The larger one, well, we'll discuss that later on. Obviously, it's gonna have more headroom, more low end if you play percussively or detune your guitar. But which one sounds better? Well, stay tuned and we'll find out. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to my channel. I do lots of reviews of acoustic related products and electric guitar stuff too. And I also go live and do concerts regularly. Please subscribe and ring the bell so you're notified of all my latest videos. So let's get straight into this. I've heard great things about these amps from my colleagues and people on the forums. So I know straight away that I'm in for a good time. But we'll start with the features. Now there's two ways that acoustic amps are approaching features these days. One is to use apps and digital touch screens, which can be very versatile, but can be fiddly. The other approach is the old classic knobs and things to turn with your hands, but they can be limited. And that is the fear with an amp like this. Now don't worry because what Hughes and Kettner have done here is they've gone for that analog approach. When I say analog, the effects here are digital. So this is a digital amp essentially, it's got DSP. But when I say analog, I mean Hughes and Kettner have gone for the hands-on approach with the knobs and dials, but they've packed in so many features that it's a really nice compromise actually. I'll go through all the features on the amp later on and do read the manual because everything is there in detail. So make sure you check that out. I'll also put links below for these exact products on Sweetwater. I do have affiliate links. I do make a small commission from the sales and it all goes to support my channel. So please check those out. Let's bring up these specs on screen right now. But let's just go through channel two. You can see that the easiest. And let's go through the features on the top of the amp. So we've got a minus 10 dB and a clip. You want to set the gain control in the middle there on channel two so that it clips occasionally on the red. So you get the red occasionally, but not too much. If you get it all the time, you've got a way too hot signal. So press the minus 10 dB button. Then below that, you've got the shape control. This will scoop the mids, boost the bass, boost the treble. This might be useful. It was useful for the K and K for me just to get more presence, more of that kind of microphone type sound, which I personally prefer. You can try that on and off and see which one suits you the best. Then there's a mute control. It's the sound still comes through the tuner out if you've got a tuner plugged into the output of the amp for tuning. So that's really nice as well. That can be very useful. The gain is there in the middle. So you're gonna set that for the guitar and then you've got EQ. Now there's two modes of EQ here. EQ one they say is more for steel string and EQ two is more for classical, but I would try both and see which one you prefer. I prefer mode one for most things with my steel string guitars. Now next up, we've got a bass, middle and treble control. I just wanna say this about these, uh, these controls. I find with acoustic amps, they're all completely different. And what I do when I get an acoustic amp to review is I go straight to the manual, to the back page. And most of the time it tells you what the actual dB boost and cut and frequencies are for these controls. And I find it fascinating because all amps have them very different and all pickups and rooms benefit from different EQ. For example, some treble EQs are set at two kilohertz and some are set at 12 kilohertz. That's a huge difference, a huge difference. So I always read the manual on these things. I'm happy to say these EQs here, the way they're set are working for me. So I'm happy about that. So the bass is plus or minus 10 dB at 80 hertz, plus or minus 6 dB at 700 hertz for the mids, and plus or minus 10 dB at 10 kilohertz for the treble. In mode two, the bass is 110, the mid is 1200, and the treble is 12 kilohertz. 
So they're very clever here. They've given you those options, the EQ, plus the scoop mode, which changes the EQ drastically as well. So you've kind of got six different EQs to play with. I think that's very, very clever. Now moving along after the EQ, we have 16 effects presets. Can you see that? From one to 16. That's really cool. And you have an effects volume. One thing to note, I discovered this later on. So there's a whole reverb, which I love. It's pretty short for me. I like a longer reverb. Well, what you can do is there's a method here in the manual. You hold down a couple of buttons and you can actually extend the length or shorten the length of the reverb and customize it for yourself and then save it, store it into the unit. So definitely read up on that if you're using the effects in here because it makes them even more powerful. You can change the length of the reverb and also how much delay and delay time and stuff like that. Very, very useful. It's hidden away in there, but I'm so glad that it's there. Next up, you see channel three. We have an auxiliary in. You can plug a mini jack in the back and play music from your phone. I'm gonna play you some music later on in my comparison as well. I've made a little track with Band in the Box from PG Music, just drums and bass, so you can hear what that sounds like through here as well, because you might wanna play music in your breaks. There's that notch control. Now I love this feature. This is so useful, especially for pickups like the K&K &K that can feed back. What you do is you go to the gig, you turn up, you play through the notes on the lower frets and you find the one that's kind of starting to feed back or indeed is feeding back and you turn the dial while, while that's ringing out until that note disappears. This is so useful. All it does is it scans through from 40 to 180 Hertz. This is where the, that low rumble feedback often lives. And it just does a tiny cut that gets rid of that. It's so useful. So that's the features on the front. Really, really cool. Not too much to worry about, but enough to shape your tone. I think it sounds really good. On the back, we have even more things. Let me just show you this. We've got the power button. We've got an optical out for recording, which is awesome. I didn't use it, but there's a reset button, a recess there. There's an auto sleep mode, which can be disabled. That's those two um, indents on the left. Then you've got a level control for your line out, which, set, which is adjustable and doesn't affect the main output, but sends effects to the front of house through that output. A headphone out, that's great. A ground lift and pre or post EQ for your DI out, which again is a fixed level out with no effects you'd give to your sound engineer. An input for channel three, which is for your phone's connection, your iPod mini jack. A foot switch, which can turn the effects on or off and also mute the amp, which is really useful to have on stage, I find. And your channel one and two, which are both combo jacks. So you could have two mics in there, two instruments in there, and they both have phantom power. I think that's everything. I can't believe the amount of features on this acoustic amp. You look at it and it looks like your traditional acoustic amp with a few controls on it. And once you get into it, you realize this thing is absolutely feature packed. It's crazy, but it's so good to have these things there because one day you might want them. And again, if you can shape your tone, all the better. I've used all different settings for the K&K &K and the Anthem to get the most from them. And I'm sure if you have other pickups like magnetic and other things as well, you might need them. So I'm really glad that they've got these features here. They really have thought of everything. It's awesome. Okay, so what I wanna do now is play you some recordings. This is vocals, which can be very challenging with an acoustic amp. And it's also guitar. This time it's my Rain Song vintage carbon fiber guitar with the Bags Anthem pickup, which is a great pickup. There's no processing here. I'm playing loops through the amp. I'm not playing in the room. So you're not hearing anything acoustic here. This is just a recording going in as if I was at a gig and looping my sound. There's no effects or processing on the loop. There's nothing. It's straight through from the guitar. All the sound you hear is done from the amp. There's a little bit of extra reverb here that I would normally use, but I want to show you what the reverb sounds like. And you're gonna hear both the era one and the era two the mic in the room and the line out as well. And then you're gonna hear my backing track, maybe band the box, just some simple drums and bass to hear that as well. So I'm gonna play these comparisons and then I'm gonna tell you what I think when we come back. Please put in the comments below what you think of these as well. Sometimes we laugh, sometimes we cry, and sometimes we fall. I don't know where you are or how you got so far from me. 
people make mistakes It's a shame it makes your heart break There's nothing left to say No promises to fail We all make mistakes People make mistakes that you're lost but at what cost to me and I know I was wrong there's only this song left to sing people make mistakes Shame and makes your heart break. There's nothing left to say. The promise is to fail. We all make mistakes. People make mistakes. Sometimes we laugh, sometimes we cry, and sometimes we fall. I don't know where you are or how you got so far from me. Cause people make mistakes. Shame and makes your heart break. There's nothing left to say, no promises to fail. We all make mistakes, people make mistakes. Told me that you're lost, but at what cost to me? And I know I was wrong, there's only this song left to sing. And people make mistakes. Shame and makes your heart break. There's nothing left to say. The promise is to fail. We all make mistakes. People make mistakes.
Okay, so what did you think? I have to say, I love doing these comparisons. I learn a lot and I was really, really impressed with these amps. I'll tell you why. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments, but personally, I mean, the line outs both sound the same, which makes sense. They're the same preamps. They're the, exactly the same thing. They're just in different boxes. So when you hear the line out, they sound the same, which is great. And they sound very good. Now, what really impressed me is the sound of the mic. I did move the mic around a bit to get the best tone. And of course, the mic position can really affect tone. But in my opinion, the mic sound and the line out sound are really close. And that indicates to me that the speakers here are very transparent, which is what Hughes and Kettner claim to be achieving. And I think they've done it. The line out sound and the mic sound in the room are very close. They really have got transparent preamps and speakers here. They sound great. Also to note, when I was recording that video, I stood behind the speakers and I thought they sounded excellent when I stood behind them as well. In fact, I was mixing my sound from behind the speaker and not in front, which is why my mix might not be optimal. But I thought the sound behind the speakers sounded excellent as well as in front, of course. So which one would I choose? Well, I mean, I'd love to know your thoughts on this. Here's my thoughts on it. I really thought I would love the Era 2 more than the Era 1. And the reason is it's got an extra speaker, two eight inch speakers, not just one. It's a bigger box. Bigger boxes tend to sound better. Obviously with the extra speaker and a bigger box, you'll get more low end. Now I'm not always a fan of low end. If you play a Dreadnought on stage, sometimes I like to really cut the low end out. So that's not a huge thing for me, but I just thought, well, it's going to sound bigger and better. But actually, I really like the sound of the Era 1 because it naturally cut that low end out. Here's the thing, though. I do tend to play in noisy bars and clubs, so I need headroom. And I think the Era 2's 400 watts will give me that reassurance because 250 is very impressive on the Era 1. But when you're playing in a noisy room with, with lots of people talking and eating and drinking, making noise, you need that headroom. There's always that time when they tell you to turn up and you, turn, you want to turn up and you can't because it's distorting. So I feel like the Era 2 will have that headroom. Also, if you play in drop tuning, you like low end or you use backing tracks with really low bass and drums, I think you're going to want the Era 2 just to have that extra low end response. So that's my opinion. I think they're all great. I think the Era 1 is great. The Era 2 is great. I love the wood effect. I love the black as well. I mean, buy both if you want to. They're great. You could even use two of them in, in stereo. It'd be awesome. So I'm kind of leaning towards the Era 2 just because it would give me that reassurance. But I'm not going to be carrying that around town on the bus because it is £30. So if I have to get something mobile, I'd definitely go for the Era 1. So Era 1 for portability. Era 2 if you're going to need that headroom and extra low end, in my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I would really like to know what you think of the sound and also which one you would choose if you were going to get one. Now, just a few things to finish up that I don't want to miss out on. I want to show you what the other one looks like. Here it is right here. It looks really nice in the black. If you're playing on stage, I feel like the black one would look great. The wood effect at home is nice. I do feel like the wood effect one might show damage over time if you're moving it around a lot, which is why I would go for the black one. But the wood one looks so nice. And then look at the stand. It's so simple. It's just like a piece of wire that goes in and it brings it up to just the right position to hear it. It's so important to have your amp on a stand when you're playing so you can hear the actual sound in your ears and not at your feet. And they've included this thing. It's so simple, but it's so effective. It's such a clever design. That stand is awesome and I love it. You can see on the right there, you've got a pole mount for your full size PA speaker stand. Again, brilliant because it's so important to get these things up high in a noisy room. And also the two holes at the top are for the stand. So if it's on the floor, you can kick it back and that comes with it. That's absolutely brilliant. I love that. All amps should come with that. Fantastic. Something else that all amps should come with is a cover and it does come with a cover as well and it has a pocket for the power cable and the stand and that looks like this. Really, really nice comes with the amp. Some amps don't come with covers and I'm really glad it comes with one. It looks awesome. Okay, so I'm super impressed. I love these amps. They sound great in the room. They sound great direct. They sound great recorded. They have all of these features included in a very practical way to use them. Again, I do love digital amps. I love when they have apps and things for even more control. But I really think Hughes and Kettner hit the sweet spot here because I know many people get frustrated with those digital things. I think this thing is kind of like a hybrid, almost like the best of both. I'd love to know what you think in the comments below. 
please let me know and please subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. I'll have more reviews coming soon and I look forward to seeing you then. So thanks for watching, stay well and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. There's nothing left to say The promise is the fate We all make mistakes People make mistakes